an insect beast is about to be devoured by carpenter ants. The beast lies within this test tube. What is this beast, you ask? It looks like a cricket, some of you may be saying. Indeed, you are right if you drew that conclusion. But if you look closely, you'll notice it's not your ordinary cricket. See its face and those highly developed bear-like claws? This beast of an insect, ladies and gentlemen, is known as a mole cricket. This particular beast from the genus Grillotalpa. I've actually been raising it over the past few days, feeding it brown rice and plant roots, getting it ready for its final destination. I've learned that it's quite a stunning creature, perfectly adapted to life underground, where it spends most of its life. It's currently their breeding season, and I caught it as it was flying around looking for a mate. Now in a community tab post, I asked you guys which of the three insects you guys wanted to be fed to our pet carpenter ants that we've been raising on the channel. A cockroach, a normal cricket, or a mystery beast insect? And the results were very clear. Over 80% of you voted that the mystery beast insect be the new prey of our carpenter ants, who have never before known the taste of raw flesh of another insect. It would be the very first time our ants would be tasting meat. And guys, the time has come to give our ants the protein they've been craving for. Warning, what you're about to see next is not for the faint at heart. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Thank you, Mole Cricket, for giving up your life to nourish my ants. This is the mini prayer I say in my head before dispatching any and all prey insects I feed to my ants. I also don't like to show the first killing blow. Not sure why, but I find it to be the most brutal. But now I'm cutting it up like a butcher would some beef or chicken. If some of you are disappointed that I didn't just throw in the entire beast insect into the ant enclosures, well, I couldn't do that for three reasons. First, this massive cricket was way too much meat for just one of our young colonies. The carpenter ant colonies we're raising are still too small and would not be able to tackle a beast insect like this alive. The cricket would surely win and we'd lose many worker ants, which at this early stage of the colony's development would be lethal. Second, this huge beast insect was enough to feed all eight of our ant colonies, as you will see in this video. And third, I just find it less cruel to kill the prey insects first. Instead of it having to die a long, painful, and drawn-out death, again, with several ants also dying from the process, this beast cricket would have surely mangled many ants. If the prey was a tiny fruit fly or something that would have died quickly after being seized by the ants, I would probably consider feeding live. Whatever the case, today you guys will be witnessing the super cool reaction of our pet carpenter ants to their first taste of meat from a prey insect. Up until today, they've only known the sweet jelly blobs I've been giving them since they first began eating solids. And I know you guys will just love their reaction to their first prey insect meat. A lot of you have also been asking for an update on the other carpenter ant colonies we've been raising that I haven't been showing much lately. So do stay tuned for all that coming up. All right, first up to eat, the Redwood Warriors. Behold, our red team of carpenter ants that we've named the Redwood Warriors, living in their AC ant tower of wood. The ants are feisty in there, they're hungry, and it's feeding day. But little did they know, they're not getting the usual sweet jelly carb they're used to. They're about to receive some fresh beast cricket steak. Dropping in the meat, let's watch. It wasn't even 15 seconds before a curious ant was following the scent of something it had never smelled before, but something it knew it liked. Cricket blood. It began to search around, waving its antennae through the air to hone in on the location of our meat offering. And bingo. Instantly it locked on and sprayed formic acid on it. Amazing how this thing knew how to attack, despite it not having met a prey item nor enemy in its life. 
As soon as the ant realized the cricket meat was not a threat, it began to feed from the wet guts of the cricket. When it was finished, it left to return to the nest to tell the others. And here's where things get super cool. Watch the swarm emerge. Before long, the meat was being devoured by a swarm of carpenter ants, who were loving this strange new food. They just loved the taste of protein. I wondered how the ants were going to strategize processing this huge chunk of meat. Some ants break the meat pieces up and carry them back to the nest. Some ants bury the meat to conceal it, while the ants eat all the food on the spot. And some ants just carry the entire chunk cooperatively back to the nest. I wondered what our carpenter ants were going to do. I watched. It looked to me like the ants wanted to carry the meat chunk, but strangely they were carrying it away from the nest entrance. Okay, perhaps they still needed to master direction and coordination. Let's give them some slack. They're still noobs. Most of the ants consume the soft edible parts on the spot, while a select few individuals seem to want to move the piece from its location. Presumably to the nest, but they kept carrying it further from the nest. At some points, when I had thought they finally had it, they stopped moving the meat and just continued to devour. So funny, these ants. Let's just sit back for a few moments now and watch the ants feed from the meat chunk. And let's see if they manage to eventually carry it into the nest. So close, girls. Enjoy your first piece of meat. So while they're busy managing this meat chunk, let's go ahead and feed another piece of meat to our second ant colony, the Ebony Army. Dropping in the meat, an ant found the piece and began to feed. The worker took a quick moment to clean itself, went back to eat some more, then headed back to the colony to tell its fellow workers of the new food it found outside. Now the ebony army swarm took a bit longer to emerge. One thing I noticed was that, see that worker there? It was still full from their last sweet jelly feeding. The colony had recently eaten jelly, as you saw in our last video. So my guess was they weren't that hungry yet. But a few ants were still interested in the new food type and flavor of our cricket meat. And soon a small gathering of ants were on site eating the cricket meat. Alright, we'll come back to the ebony army in a little bit. But meanwhile, let's feed our other carpenter ant colonies and get a quick update on each. Opening the AC test tube portal and dropping in some cricket meat for Colony 2. Looking at the colony, Colony 2 was an impressive size. They had about 20 workers or so and a lot of brood. They've been doing very well. And look, a worker went rushing in and began to wake everyone up because it had found some amazing new food that tasted so good unlike anything they'd ever had before. The ant did its best to excite the other ants, wafting its I found food pheromone all around. And even giving one of the ants a tiny taste of what it had eaten. Before long, several ants emerged one by one to feed from the piece of meat. This was just so satisfying to watch.
let's feed Colony 3. Colony 3 was also quite massive, about 20 workers and lots of brood. A couple ants honed in on the scent of the meat and began to feed. Again, those that fed came back to the nest to inform the others of the awesome new food they had eaten, which caused more ants to emerge to enjoy the new cricket steak. Colony 4. Colony 4 was doing super well. Less workers than the last two colonies, but a bigger brood pile. And look how fat the queen is! This colony was also very impressive. Now, so many of you were wondering about Queen 5, which turned out to be an unfertilized queen ant. Well, she went on to give birth to a whole lot of male ants. So yeah, still unfertilized and unable to found a legit ant colony. Just a fleet of male ants on the way. Still don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but I fed them as well. Gave them the head. Enjoy all that tender head meat, guys. Colony 6, also an impressive size with lots of brood. Look at the various jelly colors in the larvae's bellies. I threw them a chunk. And finally, remember Colony 8, who suffered the most damage from our colony mixing experiment a few weeks back? Well, check them out now. They've got some cocoons developing, which means more workers on the way. Thank goodness. They still had four workers who were doing an excellent job of caring for the queen and the young. There were many eggs and larvae on the way as well. I knew this colony would be strong and prolific in no time. I made sure to give them some good pieces of meat. The protein would really help the larvae grow much more quickly. And that was it. Checking back on the Redwood Warriors, and they were still unable to drag the piece into the nest. But I knew they would process this chunk of meat just fine. In the wild, there could be interlopers coming around wanting to steal their precious find. But here in the Ant Tower, they didn't have to worry about thieves. The Redwood Warriors looked super happy, having eaten their first taste of meat. They ran all around the nest. A worker ant came to regurgitate some of the cricket meat up to feed a larva. This valuable surplus of protein would truly accelerate the growth of the larvae now, and help the queen produce more eggs. The workers made sure to regurgitate some of the goods up to feed the queen as well. I was super happy the Redwood Warriors finally were able to feed on meat. As for the Ebony Army, a mini swarm were feeding now from the chunk. And man, it was awesome to see them with full bellies. Inside the nest, I caught workers feeding their queen. Again, it was just so gratifying knowing our ant colonies were truly enjoying their first prey insect meat chunks. I would continue to feed them prey insects in the weeks to come, along with their usual sweet jelly. By the way guys, real quick, if any of you have wanted to get into the ant keeping hobby with me, and you're interested in a great beginner ant farm, these AC Ant Tower Smalls are now at 20% off at AntsCanada.com until January 1st, as well as our AC Hybrid Nest Minis. And on top of that, if you use the promo code ANTLOVEFOREVER21, you get our Ultimate Ant Keeping Handbook eBook, complete with care guides on specific commonly kept ant species, totally free, which you can add to your cart before checking out. They make an awesome holiday gift for anyone who loves ants. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. Plus, if you didn't catch a queen ant this season and need ants, just visit the Queen Ants for Sale tab to look for ant colony sellers in your area. Just a reminder, I recommend you order now or anytime before December 17th if within the US or December 10th if outside the US. If you hope to receive your package before Christmas, December 25th, we have a limited supply, so get your AC ant farms now before they run out for the year. Also, the ant towers do not come with wood, as I made these wood pieces myself, but they do include sand for the ants to dig. I'd love for you guys to keep ants with me. It's super easy and fun. And so concludes another awesome day for our pet carpenter ants. I'd say today was a success, and they truly enjoyed their first taste of prey meat. Did you enjoy watching them enjoy their food? What other things would you like to see them try? Let me know in the comments. After all, variety is the spice of life. Just a reminder though, I come from an area where I know they don't spray pesticides. So it was safe for me to feed our ants this cricket despite it being wild caught. It's much safer to feed ants prey insects that have been raised by you or farm-raised for the pet hobby. 
like crickets, feeder roaches, mealworms, superworms, etc. I'd say it's better safe than sorry. Anyway, happy belated Thanksgiving to all our American AC family, and to all the fellow ant keepers watching, may your ants feast to their little ant heart's desire. Until next week, AC family, thank you all so much for watching and supporting the ants. It's ant love forever. <laughs>